Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with another Pioneer video. And today, we're going to be talking about the best Pioneer cards in Bloomborough. So, before we hop into the list here, Bloomborough is a really, really cool set. Honestly, spoiler season just ended, and I, I really like this set. I think it's cool. It's got a lot of really, really strong cards. And I'm going to be featuring the top 12 cards that I think will have an impact in Pioneer. There's some cards that I left off the list that I think do have an outside chance um, just because, again, there's a lot of really, really good cards in this set, but I wanted to pick the 12 that I thought could potentially or at least have a pretty good shot in making an impact in Pioneer. So we're going to go and hop into the list here and then obviously watch all the way through at the end of the video. Let me know what your list looks like for cards from Bloomborough in Pioneers. So, okay, so number 12. I have Dark Star Augur. I really do like this card. It's essentially a Dark Confidant, but you know, you get the three mana flyer and then you get the offspring, so you get two Dark Confidants. I think this card is good. What it sees play in, I'm not 100% sure though. And that's where I think a lot of cards in Pioneer are, you know, they're like really, really good, but they just don't have a really good home. So, you know, is a card like Rakdos, you know, mid range going to play this? Probably not. You know, like the Rakdos Vampires deck, obviously it's not a vampire and they're already playing like Fable. So, you know, do they really want a card like this? I'm not sure. But this card is really, really strong, whether or not it sees play in Rakdos or maybe some other deck that we'll see in the future. Who knows? But I really do like Dark Star Augur. I think this card is so sweet alrighty number 11 I have Thunder Trap Trainer which might seem weird at first but all right so hear me out so this card is essentially really close to Augur of Bolas um you know people used to play Augur Bolas a lot back in the day very similar except I think Augur Bolas might be a 1-3 potentially but I like this card for multiple reasons because one obviously you can blink it you know which is pretty sweet you can do in like some Yorian piles the second thing is this card does it is a wizard which being a wizard is not irrelevant, especially when there's cards like Wizards Lightning and Wizards Retort going around. So there's definitely a lot of wizard synergies you could do. And you got the offspring there for some really big late game potential. Maybe in a uh, deck that's like a Jess Sky or a Blue White Yorian deck, maybe they play a couple of these just to be able to, you know, at least it's just like a draw spell that also blocks. And then late game, you pay six mana and you get two of these. I don't know. I think it could be pretty solid, but who knows? I feel like this is a card where, you know, in a couple months, we're really going to be like, wow, no one understood how good this card was or everyone's gonna be like oh yeah it's just that rare auger of polis so we'll kind of see what happens but i really do like thunder trap trainer and that's why it is number 11 on my list all right number 10 i have rotten mouth viper and i i don't really see a lot of people talking about this card but i think this card is absolutely huge mostly in racto sacrifice decks which honestly there's a lot of good cards that came out for racto sacrifice in this set so we'll kind of see if that deck gets boosted overall but anyway so six six for six but not really six mana it is an additional cost to cast it you may sacrifice any number of non-land permanents this spell costs one less to cast for each permanent sacrifice this way which obviously works incredibly incredibly well with mayhem devil just because you can like sacrifice four permanents for instance and already dome them for four and then when it enters or attacks put a blight counter on it then for each blight counter on it each opponent loses four life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card so simply put this card just will win you the game if I mean, if you don't kill it, I mean, well, if your opponent doesn't kill it, that is, this card is really, really good. I like this. I mean, for life, unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discards a card is not nothing. This card is just, and it's just, whew, I really like Rotten Mouth Viper. This card's sweet. It's a 6-6. Six, six. It's it's going to be probably the biggest creature on the battlefield most of the time. I really do like this card, but again, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it in Pioneer yet, but it's just raw power. It's really strong, and that's why I've got it at number 10. Sorry, number 9, I have Scrap Shooter. So this card, a lot of people are comparing it to Gem Razor, which I think they are functionally similar cards. I mean, it's a 4-4 that has a Disenchant stapled onto it, but I really do like this card. Obviously, gifting a card is, it's not nothing, but you know at the bottom like having a four four for three with reach that's already like incredibly good stats already as it is but being able to destroy an artifact or enchantment is just really good in general so i think this card is pretty solid you know there's a number of different decks that would probably play a card like this you know like the the, the issue obviously is the gifting a card but you know i mean would you i'd probably rather play this in reclamation Re reclamation sage at least i i don't know i guess like this is one of the cards i feel like on the list i i'm the most unsure of even though i do have it at number nine i think it's really strong we'll see moving forward but i really do like scrap shooter and that's why it's in the top 10 sorry number eight 
I have feed the cycle. It's essentially just a hero's downfall with potential to be only two mana if you forage, which forages exile three cards from your graveyard or sacrifice a food. Again, I think Rakdos Sacrifice might want to play this potentially. You know, sacrificing a food that they're already going to have a million of is already pretty good anyways. But again, like the, the floor being a hero's downfall is not bad at all. And the plus being a two mana doom blade that hits any creature or planeswalker is really really good so i do like this card i even liked the the sorcery speed uh murder in this set i can't remember the name of it all of a sudden but like i thought that card was already pretty solid and then now we got feed the cycle which is absolutely insane so feed the cycle is really good and that's why i've got it in number eight on the list all right number seven i have into the flood mall which I don't see a lot of people talking about this card, but I think this is a card that like blue tempo decks and even control decks will really, really like. So you can gift a tapped fish, which is giving it a 1-1 one, one tapped blue fish, and the return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. If the gift was promised, instead return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So the thing is with obviously gifting, it's, you know, you're getting an additional benefit of said card but your opponent is getting some value from it. Giving them a tapped 1-1 one, one is probably like the like least, like other than giving them a food token, it's probably the least impactful thing that you can pretty much give them. So I like this for like even decks like Is It Phoenix, for instance, like a one mana, like uh, I guess unsummon or disperse for that is, you know, because non-land permanent is just so good. I mean, being able to bounce any non-land permanent is absolutely insane for one mana instant is crazy like i remember void snare which was a sorcery back in the day and everyone was like oh my god you can bounce anything for one mana sure it's a sorcery but it's one mana but this is just one mana instant again worst case scenario it is a, sort of an unsummon because you can't bounce your own creature or own non-land permanent but i mean i think this card's really good so i just don't see people talking about it and i think this card's really strong and that's why it's number seven on the list sorry number six i have keen-eyed curator which so I think this card is very good. I think it has potential to be higher up on the list. You know, it is a pseudo scavenging use, but with the benefit of being able to get absolutely huge. Because it, it can get plus four, plus four, and trample once you exile four cards. So it could be a seven, seven with trample, which is just absolutely insane. I really do like this card. Obviously, the deck that's going to play this is like Mono Green Devotion. It's going to shine in the Is It Phoenix matchup, especially if, you know, they don't have like a Lightning Axe or a Quick Fire Impulse to take this thing out. So I do like this card, but. I think that's probably the only deck that this card is going to see playing. I mean, like, obviously, there's definitely some, you know, green aggro decks. If you're playing, like, an Aspect of Hydra deck, yeah, sure, you could go ahead and play this, and that'd be pretty solid. But I think that Mono Green Devotion is only going to is gonna be the only shelf for this. You know, like, Scavenging Ooze, like, people are, obviously, that's the biggest comparison to Scavenging Ooze, which Scavenging Ooze is, like, you know... It's just a completely different card just because you get the immediate growth, you gain the life, which is pretty awesome, but Keen Eyed Curator can get really, really big, also like Scavenging Ooze, because you gotta think, let's say we exile four cards with Scavenging Ooze, it's gonna be a 6-6, six, six, so obviously this is a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler, so you get like the little bit bigger size there, but the life gain on Scavenging Ooze is really, really good. And let's also put it this way. I mean, Scavenging Ooze really hasn't been seeing a lot of play recently. So some people are saying, oh, this is just immediately better than Scavenging Ooze. And I think, in, you know, it's it's very comparable for sure. I couldn't tell you which one's better. But I know people, I think, are overvaluing this card a little bit, which comes a lot for me as someone who loves to play green decks. But I do think this card's good, but we will see what happens moving forward. So, all right, top five. We got the top five cards here. Number five, I have the infamous Cruel Claw. This card just seems very easy to get out of hand. It's 3-3 three, three for 3 with Menace. That's already solid as it is. When it deals combat damage to a player, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. You may cast that card by discarding a card rather than paying its mana cost, which... Like, okay, I'll just discard this random card I was going to pitch to Fable anyways and cast out, I don't know, like a Vein Ripper or something like that. I don't know. I think this card has potential to be really strong in Rakdos uh, midrange. So before Vamp, like if this card would have existed before Vampires, I think that this like Rakdos, uh, you know, midrange deck would have been playing a couple of them. But obviously the Vampire package is a little bit better than just playing again like some solid cards but i kind of i like this more than gix like you know for the decks that were like more aggro with like inti again i think this is better than gix in that deck i think this card's really good i i know most people are saying this card is really solid um but and again i think it's sweet i mean just being able to cast something from the top of your deck obviously 
there is ways of abusing that, you know, if you like, like case in point, what's that one, uh, uh, scheming symmetry where you like search your, each player like searches for their library for like a card and puts it on top of their deck or whatever. So you go, you play this and you're like, Oh, scheming symmetry, kill your blocker attack. Oh, Hey, I have this Atali on top. Oh, I guess I'll just cast it or something like that. I don't know. That's, that's just an example. Anyways, I think this card is really, really sweet. We'll see what happens moving forward, but that's why I got it at number five on the list. So, all right. Number four, I have Stormcatch Mentor, which this card is super strong. It's a Goblin Electromancer with prowess, essentially is what this is, but it also has haste. So the main reason I have this at number four, because I know a lot of people are probably like, oh my god, why do you have this so high? That's crazy. I think this is a huge boost for Is It Wizard decks in the format. I've been talking about Is It Wizards for a long time in Pioneer and wanting them to be good and get more support, and this is a huge step toward that i mean being able to you know have all your instant sorceries cost one less is is huge for multiple reasons because that means like for instance if we're playing like charter cores or for actually technically playing the um pearl of wisdom the new one from this set being able to pay one mana for that is just absolutely insane which goes a long way it makes your treasure cruises cost one less if you're playing like some weird like lightning strike-esque spells it makes them one less to cast like this card is just absolutely insane you can play like um what is it make disappears your make disappears cost one more mana so or one less mana so if you want to play like some weird like delver ish version which delver also is a wizard keep that in mind like i just think that this is a huge boost to that deck so again we'll see what happens but i think stormcatch mentor is really really good and that's why i've got it at number four all right number three i have kitsa otterball elite and i don't see a lot of people talking about this card and i don't understand why okay so one three for two vigilance prowess i'm already on board it's got the loot effect tap to draw a card and then discard a card but the mode i really like on this is two and tap it copy target instant or sorcery spell you control you may choose new targets for the copy activate if its powers only is if its powers three or greater so multiple reasons why i think this card is good one i think a deck like um like is it like prowess um you don't like the super aggro deck, I think that they would maybe want something like this. Number two, it's a wizard. Again, wizards, lightnings, and everything. It synergizes with Kitsa really, really well, which is not nothing. The third reason, being able to just copy an instant sorcery is just kind of nuts. I mean, just imagine like, okay, we're gonna, you know, with Kitsa, you know, cast a couple spells, boom. Okay, all right, two spells to be able to activate the, um, the loot on that so like let's say we're like okay we'll like opt and then we'll consider we have a kits in play oh and by the way we also have our storm catch mentor in play and then all of a sudden boom i'm gonna i'm gonna treasure cruise i'm gonna delve all these cards away and then with it obviously still resolving we're gonna copy it we're gonna get two treasure cruises okay sure i don't know i think this card is just really really good i again i don't see people talking about it you know heck maybe even like uh i know that there was an esper legends deck a while ago that was doing pretty good you know maybe they splashed this for some reason you know being able to copy an instant sorcery is pretty sweet you know even if you're like again vanishing verse or something i don't know fatal push whatever i think this card is really really good we'll see what happens moving forward but i just don't see anyone talk about this card and i think it's really really strong so okay we got two cards left. Number two, I have Storm Chaser's Talent, which I think this card's going to be good for a couple reasons. One, it's going to go really well with other otters, obviously, because, you know, you get the, you know, the first ability there, getting the one with prowess. The uh, second ability is pretty good. And then the third ability, not that you're going to be activating that very often, is good. The reason I think this is good is because of creativity. I mean, that's simply put, I think it's going to be fantastic for that deck. You get like your 1-1 one, one that you can target there. You get your uh, your level 2 class is like, oh, hey, they thought seized my creativity. I'm going to go ahead and buy it back. And then the level 3, again, you're almost never going to be activating that. But when it does happen, you'll probably just win the game for the most part. But I think this card is good just because of creativity. I think if creativity didn't exist, I'd probably... This card would probably not quite be on the top 10, but I still do think it's good for just like the prowess otter in general. But again, I really do like this card. I think it's really sweet. And that's why it's number two on the list. Sorry. Number one, the number one card on the list that I think is going to have the most immediate impact is going to be Ember Heart Challenger. And simply put, I think this card is going to be really, really good in the Boros Heroic decks. 2-2 two, two for 2 with Haste and Prowess is already absolutely crazy. And then when it becomes the target of a spell or an ability you control for the first time each turn, exile the top card of your library. Until end of turn, you may play that card. The other thing I want to mention is, even besides like Boros Heroic, which, you know, obviously Valiant is not heroic and only you know counts the first time the first ability of it but even like in mono red if you monstrous rage this this that's still really really good and again 
two two for two with haste and prowess is already pretty solid as it is and then now we're getting all this potential card draw and everything off of it i really do like this card i think that you know we'll see what happens moving forward but in terms of how the pioneer format is right now i think that ember heart challenger has the highest potential to be really good in the format again i'm not saying it's the most powerful card in the set per se i think it's one of the most powerful cards but i think just how the format is as of right now i think it has the highest shot of definitely making an impact from bloomboro as do a lot of cards i think bloomboro is a really really cool set and i'm excited to see moving forward how it goes so all right well that takes us to the end of the video here thanks so much for watching huge shout out to our channel members ralph matt arcadius ray gary and serwanoki if you were interested in being a channel member it's only one us dollar a month you get access to the exclusive discord as well as other features here on the channel so i'm commander crane thanks for watching this video and I hope to catch you in the next one.